Welcome back, everybody. We're doing a deep dive today, and it's a colorful one, I'll tell you that. We're looking at cannabis stems specifically, why some of them turn red or purple. Mm. Sometime out of nowhere, it seems. Yeah. It's one of those things that can be a little mysterious. Definitely. But the thing is, it's not just about looks, right? Those colors, they can actually tell us a lot about the plant's health, its genetics, and yeah, maybe even how we're doing as growers. Exactly. So to help us crack the code, we've got a whole stack of research here. Articles, grow guides, FAQs, dot the whole nine yards. And of course, I've got our expert here to help us make sense of it all. Happy to be here. Always love a good plant mystery. Okay, so let's jump right in. One thing our sources mention is that some strains are just naturally prone to those vibrant colors. It's all thanks to these things called anthocyanins. They're pigments, and they create reds, purples, blues. You see them in all kinds of plants, actually. Yep. Think of blueberries as beautiful purple potatoes. Exactly. And in the cannabis world, you've got strains like purple haze, blueberry, granddaddy purple, all known for their colorful flair. All in the genes. Makes sense. But then our sources throw a wrench in things. They say environment plays a role, too, mm -hmm. so even a plant that's not genetically colorful could still develop those hues. That's right. Think of it this way. The genes provide the potential for color, but the environment can kind of flip the switch, turning that potential on or off. Interesting. Temperature swings, especially if the nights get cooler, that can trigger anthocyanin production even in strains that aren't normally known for being colorful. Oh, so like if you had, say, northern lights, which is usually pretty green, you might see some purpling on the stems if the temperature drops at night. Precisely. It's like the plants responding to its surroundings, adapting to those cooler conditions. And this is where it gets really interesting for growers, because it shows you how important it is to know your specific strain and what it tends to do. Right. You don't want to see a little color and immediately freak out mm -hmm. thinking something's wrong when it could just be natural, right? Exactly. It's all about understanding what's normal for your particular plant and then looking for any changes that might be a sign of a problem. Okay, so that's a good segue because our sources are pretty clear that not all stem coloration is harmless. Sometimes it's the plant's way of telling us something's off, like a nutrient deficiency. Yeah, that's right. Nutrients are those essential building blocks for plant health. And if something's missing, it can throw a whole bunch of processes out of whack. And those colorful stems, they can be an early warning sign that something's not quite right. It's like the plant sending up a flare saying, hey, a little help down here. I love that analogy. And just like different colored flares mean different things, different nutrient deficiencies can create different patterns of discoloration. It's almost like the plant's given us clues to help us figure out the problem. So it's not just about seeing color. It's about understanding the specific patterns and any other symptoms that are going on at the same time. You got it. Like, what does it mean if the stems are turning red, but the leaves are also kind of yellow in between the veins? Ah, great example. That yellowing between the veins, it's called inner venal chlorosis, and it's often a sign of magnesium deficiency. Magnesium's crucial for photosynthesis, you know, the process where plants turn light into energy. Right, right. Without enough magnesium, the plant has trouble making chlorophyll, the pigment that gives plants their green color. So the yellowing is actually a lack of green. The chlorophyll's breaking down. Exactly. And those red stems you mentioned, it could be indicating the plant's also having trouble transporting sugars, which is another process that magnesium plays a role in. Wow. So it really is like a detective story. you got to put all these clues together to figure out what's going on. I love that. You're a natural. Well, I'm learning from the best. But okay, so we've got magnesium deficiency. Our sources also mention phosphorus, potassium, and calcium as potential culprits behind stem discoloration. What kind of telltale signs should we be looking for with those? So with phosphorus, for example, besides the discolored stems, you might notice the leaves are getting darker and curling up a bit. Okay. Phosphorus is really important for root development and energy transfer in the plant. So a deficiency there can really impact the plant's overall vigor. It's like... Like it's losing its pep. Doesn't have the energy to grow right. Exactly. And then you've got potassium, which is all about water regulation, nutrient transport, the plant's overall resilience, you know. Uh -huh. A potassium deficiency, you might see leaf curling there too, but also poor bud development. And yep, those discolored stems can be part of the picture. So if the plant's struggling to move water and nutrients around efficiently, that stress could show up as those colorful stems. That's the idea. Yeah. And then last but not least, we've got calcium. Right. That's essential for strong cell walls, overall plant structure, a calcium deficiency that can lead to stunted growth, blossom, and rot, and you guessed it, those telltale stem color changes. 
It's amazing how each nutrient plays such a specific role and how the deficiencies show up in different ways. But sometimes it's not just about what's going on inside the plant, right? It's what's happening on the outside, too. You're absolutely right. External factors, things like pests and diseases, those can stress the plant out, too, and lead to those same color changes. Right. It's like the plant saying, hey, something's attacking me over here. Uh, yeah, it's like a distress signal almost. <laughs> Our sources mention some usual suspects, spider mites, aphids, different kinds of bacterial or fungal infections. Uh, tell me about it. I've had my fair share of battles with those tiny invaders, aphids especially so stubborn. But it's interesting to think they could be behind those color changes, too. What's actually going on there? How does that work? Well, when those pests attack, they're not just being annoying, right? They're actually causing damage to the plant's tissues. Sucking sap, chewing on leaves, even burrowing into the stems. All that disrupts the plant's ability to transport nutrients and water effectively. So it's like they're creating blockages in the plant's circulatory system, almost. That's a great way to put it. And that disruption leads to stress, and that stress can trigger those anthocyanin pigments to show up, giving us those red or purple stems. It's a similar story with diseases, actually. A fungal infection, for instance, that can damage the plant's tissues and mess with nutrient uptake, leading to similar symptoms. Makes you realize those color changes aren't always directly from a nutrient deficiency, huh? Could be a sign of something much bigger going on. Absolutely. That's why it's so important for growers to be on top of things, regularly checking their plants for any signs of pests or diseases. Catching it early is key. Definitely. So it's almost like instead of just reacting to problems when they pop up, we should be focusing on creating conditions that prevent those problems in the first place, right? Preventative plant care. Exactly. And that's where integrated pest management comes in IPM, for right. short. Right. It's a holistic approach focused on preventing those pest and disease issues rather than wait until they've taken hold and then try to fight them off. Yeah, our sources mention things like keeping your growth space clean, using physical barriers to keep those pests out, even introducing beneficial insects to help control the unwanted visitors. It's all about creating that balanced ecosystem where pests and diseases have a harder time taking over. And then if you do have to intervene, IPM prioritizes organic and environmentally friendly solutions over those harsh chemical pesticides. It's about respecting that delicate balance of nature, right? Not just trying to dominate and control everything with chemicals. Exactly. And this is where that soil food web concepts we talked about earlier comes into play. It's this fascinating network of all these interconnected organisms living in the soil, playing a crucial role in plant health. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier, but I gotta admit, I'm still a little fuzzy on what that actually means. Can you break it down for me? Sure. Think of it like this. Beneath the surface of the soil, there's this whole bustling metropolis of microscopic organism. You've got bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, even tiny little arthropods, all interacting and contributing to this complex web of life. These guys are breaking down organic matter, cycling nutrients, even helping to protect plants from diseases. So it's not just dirt down there, huh? It's a whole ecosystem teeming with life. Exactly. And when that ecosystem's in balance, it creates this healthy foundation for plant growth. The plants get the nutrients they need, they're better able to resist pests and diseases, and they just thrive. Wow, I'm starting to see the bigger picture here. It's not just about the plant itself, it's about the whole environment it's growing in. And by taking care of that environment, we can create the conditions for healthy, resilient plants. You got it. Mm -hmm. And it all comes back to those colorful stems. When you see those reds and purples, it's a sign that something is happening, whether it's genetics, environment, nutrients, pests, or diseases. It's a reminder to pay attention to those subtle cues our plants are giving us and view those color changes as an opportunity to learn more about what's going on beneath the surface. Exactly. It's a journey that can be incredibly rewarding, too. The more we learn about our plants and the environments they thrive in, the better equipped we are to help them reach their full potential. And speaking of reaching full potential, we've talked a lot about preventing problems, but what about when our plants are already showing those signs of stress, like those discolored stems? What are some things we can actually do to help strengthen their immunity and get them back on track? That's a great question. And there are a few key things to keep in mind. First off, it's crucial to identify the source of the stress, right? Figure out, is it a nutrient deficiency, pests, a disease? 
Is it something in the environment that's fluctuating too much? Once you've got a handle on what the problem is, then you can take some targeted action to address it. Like playing plane detective again, huh? Gathering those clues and putting the pieces together. Exactly. And once you've addressed that underlying issue, then you can really focus on supporting the plant's natural defenses. One approach that's gained in popularity, especially among growers inspired by those amazing folks that I see in the special branch, is using beneficial microorganisms. Oh, yeah, I've heard about those. They're like these tiny little helpers living in the soil, supporting plant health. Exactly. Beneficial microorganisms, things like mycorrhizal fungi and certain bacteria, they form these symbiotic relationships with plants, helping them access nutrients more efficiently, improve water uptake, and even protecting them from pathogens. It's a win-win situation all around. So it's like giving your plants a microscopic army to help them grow strong and fight off those invaders. I love that. And another tool that can be really helpful in strengthening plant immunity is silicon. It's a naturally occurring element that helps to strengthen cell walls, making plants more resistant to pests and diseases. It's like giving them a suit of armor. That's incredible. So it's not just about fighting off the invaders. It's about making the plant itself stronger and more resilient. Exactly. And there are a bunch of ways to provide plants with silicon foliar sprays, soil amendments, even specialized nutrient solutions. It's a really valuable tool to have in your arsenal when it comes to boosting plant immunity. It's amazing to think about all the different ways we can support our plants' natural defenses. And it all circles back to understanding those subtle cues they're giving us, like those colorful stems. They're not just some random aesthetic quirk. They're messages from the plant telling us about its needs, about its health. Beautifully said. And the more we learn to listen to those messages, the better we become at cultivating healthy, thriving cannabis plants. It's a journey of discovery, isn't it? And it's yeah. one I'm excited to keep exploring. It really is. And it can take you down some really interesting paths, you know, like... Thinking about all these different ways to strengthen plant immunity. Yeah. It keeps bringing me back to Iceni Special Branch and their whole philosophy of working with nature, not against it. Yeah, they're such a great example of that. Their whole living soil approach is all about creating that balance, that ecosystem where plants can just thrive naturally. And the results speak for themselves, right? I mean, have you seen their Instagram at Iceni Special Branch? Those plants are incredible, mm -hmm. so healthy, so vibrant. Really makes you wonder what we're missing when we try to control every single aspect of the grow. It's like we've forgotten that nature has its own wisdom, you know, mm -hmm. its own way of doing things. And when we try to force our will on that, we often end up causing more problems than we solve. So maybe instead of trying to be the ultimate plant puppet master, we should be more like a supportive gardener, creating the right conditions and then letting nature do its thing. That's a beautiful way to put it. It's about partnership, not domination. And when we do that, it opens up a whole world of possibilities. And maybe, just maybe, we'll start to see fewer of those colorful stems that signal distress. Because our plants will be so healthy and resilient, they won't need to send up those flares anymore. Wouldn't that be amazing? It's a beautiful vision. Uh -huh. And I think it's definitely within reach if we're willing to shift our perspective and embrace a more holistic way of growing. Speaking of shifting perspectives, one thing that's really stuck with me throughout this whole deep dive is the importance of observation. It's not just about following a set of rules or blindly applying techniques. It's about really paying attention to our plants, learning to understand what they're trying to tell us. Absolutely. Those subtle cues, like the color changes in the stems, they can be such valuable pieces of information if we know how to read them. It's like learning a new language, the language of plants. And once you start to understand that language, it opens up this whole new level of communication, of connection with your plants. It really is a beautiful thing, isn't it? To be able to have that kind of dialogue with nature, to understand its rhythms, its needs. It's a reminder that we're not separate from nature. We're a part of it. And that's a powerful realization, for sure. It's a reminder that when we care for our plants, we're also caring for ourselves and for the planet as a whole. And that brings us back to the inspiration we find in folks like Iceni Special Branch, who really embody that interconnectedness in their approach to growing. Yeah, for sure. Their Instagram, at Iceni Special Branch, is such a great resource, a constant reminder that we can grow amazing cannabis while also nurturing the soil, the ecosystem, and ultimately ourselves. They're leading the way, showing us it's possible. It really is a beautiful thing to see, and it gives me so much hope for the future of cannabis cultivation. I couldn't agree more. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today, from the science behind those colorful stems, yeah. all the way to the art of creating a truly thriving cannabis garden. 
It's been a fascinating journey, and I hope everyone listening has picked up some valuable insights they can use in their own growing adventures. And if you're looking for even more inspiration, be sure to check out Iceni Special Branch over on Instagram at Iceni Special Branch. You won't be disappointed. They're a true gem in the cannabis world. Absolutely. And remember, whether your stems are red, purple, or green, the most important thing is to keep learning, keep experimenting, and most importantly, keep enjoying the journey of growing this incredible plant. That's the heart of it all, isn't it? The joy of connecting with nature and witnessing that miracle of life unfolding in our gardens. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of cannabis stem coloration. Until next time, happy growing.